I bought seven airplanes, sight unseen off of Facebook Marketplace for $100,000, and uh, they don't run. They haven't ran in quite a while, and we have five days to get them all going. The plan is to sell six of them and be able to keep this one for free. Oh, green is better. I've never actually hand propped. This is freaking nerve wracking. This is why we keep Jesse around. Why this plane, you ask? It is a 1946 Piper Cub J3, a mere 77 years old. And uh, it is definitely 77 years old with the technology that matches. This was the biggest production airplane in Piper's history. Over 20,000 of these airplanes were made. And here's what's the crazy part, is there's 5,500 flying today. Nuts. This is like the Model A of airplanes. It doesn't get any more simple than this. And this is the airplane that started the general aviation revolution. I think like 90% of the World War II pilots got their start in this thing. They went from this to the T6 to the Mustang or you know whatever, Spitfire, or whatever they were flying at the time. And it's still just super duper popular today. About as simple as construction as you get, really. You have bars here and here, and then there's a couple of other bars inside, and then you just stretch blanket around it and you know glue it down, and that's pretty much the entire airplane. Uh, there's no alternator on it. So you, 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 know, you can't start it with a starting motor or key, you just gotta man up and throw the prop and try not to chop your arm off in the process. There's no radios, so you just, you're flying 7600 the whole time. For you non-aviation people out there, 7600 is a code that you put on the little transponder thing in the airplane for, I can't hear anybody, radios are all not working. It does not get more simple of an airplane than this thing at all. I don't even think it has flaps. Nope, no flaps either. Ironically, you, you can do acrobatics in it, limited acrobatics, which that's kind of weird. I don't understand that exactly, but whatever. So yes, we have uh, under the hood here, you're looking at all 65 BTUs. Engine, well, I mean, this is a Continental, but it's basically a Volkswagen Bug engine. 65 horsepower, it's about the same as a Volkswagen Bug actually. Uh, for suspension, you literally have bungee cords under here. I'm not making any of this up. That's actually what's under there. This one has the, the modification brakes of uh, hydraulic brakes, because the old ones that are like on this one right here, and we'll get to this one soon, but it's got a cable. Can you see this? See that cable like on your bicycle? That's exactly what that is. That cable goes Wah! and then it puts you just spreads the brakes out. You have to steer with the brakes on it and it swings the tail around and that tail wheel back there just kind of goes where she wants to go. The pilot, whenever he's flying by himself, has to sit in the back seat. I know, a little bit weird, but he has to sit back here because if he sat up there, there'd be too much weight forward and the plane would want to fly like this and that, that's not good. Uh, so the pilot has to sit here and Pretty much you're limited to one very skinny person up front. The main spar that holds all the wings together is like a two by six. It's not even a two by six, it's a one by six. Come here and check this out. That's made out of wood. That makes me feel very secure. So the gas tank's right here next to your knees, you know, so if, again, if anything happened, uh, they don't want you to suffer. <laughs> Gone. Uh, yeah and you've got very basic gauges. You got oil pressure, oil temp, RPM, uh, your speedometer and your altitude. Well, last time on the last video, as you may have seen, he did get it started and running and basically he got it running faster than what we could even get the camera over there to see. Uh, but the one thing we didn't do was actually take a look inside the engine and around the engine to see if you know, what the condition is and that kind of thing. And that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna find out if this airplane is 
definitely worth selling the other six airplanes to keep this one over all the rest of them. If this was in perfect condition, everything worked and you know, engine was good, all that kind of stuff, it is worth about $50,000 just by itself. Now that is like a really super duper nice one. Uh, so basically if it doesn't run, just this engine right here is 20 grand, $25,000 of its total value, which is crazy to me. So we got to figure out, is this thing worth keeping over all the seven uh, other ones? So right away, noticing tires, got a little flat there, there and there, you know, put in a couple bucks for tires. Uh, we got the interior on this thing is pretty basic, if I'm honest with you. Uh, I mean, it's functional, it works. The big thing about these is this is just a fabric. It's a kind of a stretchy plastic type of stuff. And uh, this, of course, would age and everything like that. The nice thing is this one has been here in the hangar its whole life, so that's a bonus. And the big number on this one, this engine, to the best of my knowledge with the logbooks, it only has a couple hundred hours on it, which in car terms, they have this thing called TVO, which is, uh, you know, speak for, you, you're supposed to replace it at that time after so long. And let's just call it 100,000 miles is when you're supposed to rebuild, replace the engine in a car. It's kind of the same thing in airplane world. So this one has only like 20,000 miles on it. So it's pretty low. It has about 200 hours on this one right here. So that's a very, very good thing. The propeller is also one of the more expensive bits on this, and this one is actually kind of ridiculously in good shape. It doesn't, it needs a polish and a little bit of paint, but that's super good right there, because just this propeller is several thousand dollars on an airplane, a certified airplane for sure. We got some more fabric. I'm looking for any uh, damage, any cuts, any place where the fabric is pulling up. I'm also just checking it. Now there is actual special tools that check for the thickness and the condition of it and stuff like that. But we're just, we're gonna go with the calibrated eyeballs here. I've had LASIK surgery, so it makes it fine. Obviously gonna need some lubrication on everything. Now, this one is what's called a certified airplane. They have to be inspected by an actual certified mechanic of the highest level in the FAA, which is called an inspection authorization, an IA. Uh, so if this one is worth it by our eyeballs, which so far everything I've seen it is definitely, we're gonna have to bring one of those people in to do the inspection on it to make sure that everything is legal, it's all safe and airworthy and all the stuff is brought up to current standards so that it can be legal and safe to fly again. We'll find that out here in just a second, but it's looking pretty good so far. And these little things, these are inspection plates. We'll be popping those off here in a little bit, taking a look up inside there to make sure there's no rust or rot or anything like that going on inside there. And what this is what I call the crunch test. You do this on bonanzas too. <laughs> you go back through the, the tail and you go, you squeeze it because they're made out of uh, magnesium, not aluminum or anything like that and you squeeze it and if they crunch like a bag of potato chips, just go like this and walk that way because it ain't worth it. Oh yeah, and this one, check this out. So the front of this airplane pivots up and down for its trim. How cool is that? Okay, checking this, checking all these, making sure this nice and tight. That goes there, checking this up and down, that's tight. There, like a nice drum. It is like a drum kit. All that stuff is in there, not no tears. I think we hit the jackpot on these. Leg day. Other than just needing some WD-40 on stuff. My remote control car has the same, same things on it. Holy crap, come here. 
Is that, that is the exhaust. Can you imagine trying to get this thing out of here? Look at where that pin is at. And that's the exhaust. Can you imagine trying to get that out of here if something was going on? Revealing. It's got slick mags, those are recent too. Those look actually pretty good. If this thing had an alternator on it, we could throw an electronic mag on there. Now that we got the engine cowling off, I noticed something very good. You see that orange color right there? That is a good sign for airplanes that sit for a long time because Orange means chromed cylinders, which chrome doesn't rust or pit very easily. Now they have different colors. They have black, orange, uh, blue, I'm sure. I think there's a green one or something. It's all throughout the different ages, they did different things to the cylinders that would help them. Uh, but orange, for the long and short of it, is the best one you can find for an airplane that sits a while because it's likely that it's not rusted. Leaks? Looks fairly dry. I mean, it's a little bit, you know, we got some Chevy, what I call Illinois anti-rust happening. That's for self-lubrication, which is good. Kind of like on a Harley Davidson, the old ones had the exposed push rods, kind of same deal. 77 years old. It looks pretty good for being 77. That's pretty much the tour because there's nothing else to the airplane. There's no alternators, there's no avionics, there's no anything. Well, we can make sure the throttles move lock to lock. Um, there's not even a mixture. <laughs> it just has like a gas pedal and that's it. And the mag switch on and off. That's all you got. Yeah. So here we'll, we'll just do a quick, it's on the idle stop right now and we'll just go wide open and see. All right. Going open. Nice and smooth. Yeah. All lock. Right to the stop to the stop. Yeah, and it was smooth up here. Jesse, so, what, do you, what do you think of this? Um, it's extremely simple. You don't have an oil filter. You have an oil screen. You don't have a vacuum pump. You don't have a starter. You don't have an alternator. It's meant to do one thing, work. It's got a nice set of slick mags on both sides. Um, it's super simple. I mean, even, even all the way down to the flight controls, it's super simple. You know, there's not a ton of stuff that could go wrong. Condition-wise, from what you've seen so far, you've helped poke around a little bit. Right. Are we thumbs up or thumbs down? With the way that everything's looking, just, just first view, of course, you know, I haven't really gotten a chance to dig into it. So far, it's a thumbs up. And we'll see if it's gonna be two thumbs up. You know, it might be, it might not be. What I wanna do is get it started. Again, it was running pretty fine last time uh, before the uh, IA gets here, or maybe have them come over here since I've never actually hand propped an engine. We tried once, but it wouldn't start on a different airplane, so I've never done this before, so I don't want to cut my hand or kill myself. So let's maybe wait to find out somebody who knows how to do it. But if they weren't here, I would totally give it a shot anyway, just throw it out there. I think it's time to bring in the IA to go ahead, spend the money, get this thing all the way back up to where it's legal to fly now. Vicky, pleasure. So here's a little side note about her is her and your dad, is that right? Knew uh, Jerry, who was the, the, the guy that passed away, that these were all his airplanes. They've been taking care of these airplanes for years and years and years. So. She knows these airplanes better than anyone on the planet, except for Jerry, who passed away. So, we got her back out here. She was so gracious to come out and give them one final look over and go before they ride on out of here. And she said she was gonna help us hand prop this thing to get it started and show us how it's supposed to be done. Okay, first you make sure that you are fuel's on and you've primed everything up. Okay. Usually about four shots, maybe a shot. On the, the, the primer up here. The primer. This right up here. With the <laughs> and then on throttle, 
do a couple of swipes with it, and then put it and crack it. Okay. Just in crack position. Yeah. When you go to do these, you always want to remember to pull and fall back. Okay. Because most people are going to fall in. You want to always, when you pull it down, fall back. Yeah, you don't want to go into the mm -hmm. propeller. Now, I've also seen where they would do it from back here, where you'd boom like that. Yes. Now, so. some, sometimes it's best if you do it this way, if you're strong enough, not all of us are strong enough, but if you're strong enough, always have it to where you can go this so you can pull yourself back. Okay. And then you make sure your mags are on both. We can't seem to get the the coffee into the, the maker, so, but it's not doing that the way it's, you think it's supposed to operate. 77 year old airplanes. So this, this is why we keep Jesse around in his handy flashlight. So you see this cable right here? Yeah, that cable comes up and goes around and goes to that that turns the fuel on. Well, that is not connected to that little arm right there that turns the fuel on. So that's off and that's on where it's supposed to go. Now, this little thing right here is the primer and now it works. But you pull this out. Give it a half. Okay. I mean, as soon as you kind of oh. go, you know. Oh, yeah. That's right there. Okay, now it's primed. We just also realized, which we saw this before, but all the wind off of this is gonna go that way and pretty much blow whatever is over there all over the place. So it's gonna be fine. And the great thing about this airplane is it's so light. It just zip right around. Yeah, you're good over here. Good back there. I think we are gonna have to go forward. Come around, watch that wing tip. We might have to open that door up here. Maybe we can scoot it in the hanger a little bit more. Good. Okay. Okay. Now officially I'm nervous again. Can I get a clear prop? No. All right. He's a liar. That's what he is. I got a feeling. up a little bit more so whenever we check the oil and do all that stuff we know what it's going to do one down six to go <laughs> i know she pulled it back i'm like that came back a lot further than i thought it was going to and sure enough he took a thing in there shot his flashlight you know this is not connected Doop, shoo, shoo. there you go Normally, it normally kicks off pretty easy, so. Yeah. Four, four blades max, uh, or something's wrong. That's about once, what it was. Once there was fuel in it, it just fine. Yeah. I knew it would work. I don't know why you guys were doubting. What we're doing is checking the compression. What's different with airplanes versus cars is cars, you usually plug the thing in, crank it over a bunch of times and see how the PSI builds up, and that tells you what kind of compression you got. Well, in airplane world, we're doing more of a leak down check where you put it on there uh, and it's a differential leak down. So we have 80 PSI going in and we're seeing how much it holds inside the cylinder. 
more is better closer to 80 you can get is always better but this one will tell us if rings are issues if there's scratches if the cylinder the ring in, i mean it'll tell you quite a few things and if we have any blow by into the crankcase as well so we're listening for where this air is going what does it say so it's high something 70 something about 78 shoot 78 i'll take that all day long quick disconnect that thing before this head changes its mind nice that is a fantastic sign that means the cylinders are testing good all the rings are working the seating and all the gaps and stuff like that and it's not blowing out into like a bad valve or something like that so it's sealing up great which is a good good sign one down three to go and each cylinder fun fact uh, for this size you're probably talking about 1500 bucks that's neat that sucks is what that does. <laughs> Well, I just put your finger over the thing. Yeah, but I like to show the piston. Oh. I'm yeah. one of those weird people. All right. And hear the air flowing out? That's the piston coming up with the valves closed. You're sticking your finger in there? Yes. I'm not sticking my freaking finger in any engine. I don't care. If you're going slow, it's fine. <laughs> no. I have trust issues. <laughs> I mean, they, have, they have all the fancy equipment you're supposed to be using, but if you're out in the field, hmm, okay. you're barely at 18. Yeah, that was hardly anything on here. So on that cylinder, <clears throat> we have to do some further investigation. All the air was blowing right out of the exhaust, so there might be an exhaust valve stuck open on it, piece of carbon or something. And the click that you hear is the magnetos, the impulse coupling, whenever it snaps, it creates that spark and it retards the timing so that it sparks whenever you're going. And after it gets over, what about 200 RPM, I think, is whenever it no longer, the spring tension in there, centrifugal force moves it away so it's not going click, 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 click every time it's going after 200 RPM. So there you go. Fun fact of the day. 1920, 1930 technology. Yeah. And here it is, 2023. 77 year old airplane. And it's still, still going. It's crazy. Okay. Ready, set? I am. All clear. We're at 80. And 80. Yeah? Yep. Sweet. Yeah, I can feel this one pretty tight. Oh, you can feel the pressure come off of it and everything. That's fun. If you let go of this thing, and if it was just that little bit off, it would go whoop bam and knock you out. Do you want to demonstrate after this? No. <laughs> I let go of it and it just goes boom. That's a bad day. And you don't know which way this thing's going to go. Because it might be on just that little bit of the top that's center or just on the other side. And that's why I'm holding both sides because it's either going to rack me right in the mommy daddy button or it's gonna come around and smack me right in the forehead. No. I mean, I'm fixed, so we're not having any more kids. And, you know, I guess the other way is about the same result, really. <laughs> I mean, a little bit right there. But yeah, you can, you can hear it just dumping out of that. You're holding at 32. Yeah. So we have exhaust valve issues on, what is this, number three, two and three? What's your uh, next step on this for checking them out? Checking them out will be more scoping. Okay. There's the bottom spark plug and I can flip it. Right there she is. Yep. Alright, there's, is that the exhaust or intake valve? Did I think that's the intake. It? Did we rotate it? Yeah, the, the intake stroke? is going to be on this side. Oh, that's the exhaust valve over there, right there, I think. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the intake. Okay, that's... Yeah, you got junk right there. Yeah, this thing's just filled with junk. That's all it is. So that's what push. this sucker does, is you just need to fly the thing. A couple of techniques you can do. One, you can pull the cylinder off, pull everything off, 
clean it all, do that. Two, you can move it up, you know, get the stuff out of the way, shove some rope down in there, and then make the piston come up and kind of smush against that. Uh, and then the, there's another way where you can kind of do the same thing, but use some valve lapping compound, which is basically just aggressive toothpaste. Get it on there and that'll clean it up and take a drill and move it around and kind of grind that stuff off. And then there's Jimmy's World way, which is the way we're gonna do it today. Uh, it involves a hammer. Nice save. Good save. All right, now we need to rotate it around so it's closed. Ooh, in here, you'll get it taste, so. This valve on the right is the intake valve. As one valve closed, the other one is getting ready to open. This is the intake valve starting to open. Sucking in air and fuel as the piston goes down. And it's going to be a top dead center when the prop gets back around to the bottom. Should be top dead center right there. Ish. Here, you just want to stick your finger in there. Yeah, there's a piston right there. Yeah, there's just a piece of chunk of something in there. You move everything or this goes down, you might be able to get in there. Oh, I was just going to smack it right on top of that thing. Right. Yeah, so basically you just hit it with a hammer. You give it the old fawns and you go. Like that. None at all. None whatsoever. I don't want to hit it too stinking hard, but at the same time, it does need some love. Hitting it with the hammer, I'm trying to stake the valve, which oh, is to better. jar the valve enough to seat and get that chunk of carbon off of there that's holding it open. Got it. Ooh, I feel suction on my thumb now. Green River. I've been working on the railroad all this one day. Nailed it. That didn't make any difference. Um, all right, so we're having a problem with that valve seating float, right? Uh, so we've staked it a few times. You watch Jimmy with a hammer. Uh, and Vicky's shaking her head. It didn't really do a whole lot. So the thought process is, is we're gonna throw a mini PSI of pressure inside of here, right? And whenever we, you know, Jimmy's gonna be holding the prop, we're gonna throw 80 PSI in. And while we're also throwing air in there, we're gonna go ahead and stake the valve then because then you're also gonna have 80, you know, 80 pounds of air that's pushing back on that valve to potentially give it a little bit of foam to get it to close. And while the valve is open, 80 PSI of air will be going through there to hopefully blow any junk that gets knocked loose down into the exhaust and get rid of that. Correct. Fill it. Again, again. Well, there's a chunk of something stuck in there, isn't there? Yeah. There's a whole ridge. This ain't making it any better. No. All right, yeah, I got that. It can't go like this. It's either, no. it's going to be another cylinder on there, or... Let me throw this kind of crazy idea out there. What's your crazy yeah, idea, James? We button this girl up. We pull it out there, and we run the, run the crap out of it and then bring it back in here. It's not a bad idea. Because that is the, that's the best way that that's yeah, gonna blow the, that the stuff out. Gonna, the heat, the RPM, it. the everything. And that's the whole problem with this is that it just hasn't been ran hard. For real. I mean, it's sat here in idle. So like I said, we're gonna run it really hard and then let normal engine stuff clean all this out of here. And that's gonna be fine. Because it's really, what, you know, hammer.
normally a hammer does work, but sometimes you just need to give the beans and let nature take its course. I was gonna say the hammer wasn't big enough, but <laughs> pretty good size. that's a pretty good sized hammer. So Yeah, we got it outside. We're gonna run it up. I'm gonna see if I can get it moving fast enough to get the full RPM, yet not fast enough to where I start flying with it. <laughs> kind of a, yeah, it's, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fine. Have you ever, pro or, you know, yeah, this is gonna be your cherry too, huh? Let's see how you do. All right, over and under. How many how many throws do you think it's going to be? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't, don't start taking bets now. <laughs> okay, so let's get some seat belts. Sterilize the cockpit. Reposition the surrounding. Yeah. Well, these seat belts are going to need some washing. Holy crap. Fine. Lord of mercy. Yep. Oh, yes. That might be one of, and then brakes, and then hold this sucker back in your chest the whole time to make sure that tail doesn't come up, and buckle this up in case we do decide to go flying and I don't fall out, because, you know, Yes. All right. The key. The key. All right. So, before you kick the bag, I want to get the proper row on it. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Cracked uh, mags are hot. Throttle's cracked. Foot on the brake. Go ahead. Ooh. Oh, come on! You gotta man up on it. Nicely done! All right, watch out, I'm gonna taxi back and forth. See, the thing sounds like I was so nervous getting ready to taxi this airplane. It was the first time I had been in it with it running and knowing that the brakes might not work at all Hi. and how well they worked and if it was steering and I couldn't see anything out of the front so I had to keep swerving from side to side in an S to see down the runway to make sure I didn't run into the bushes. And then at the same time I'm trying to do that, I have to get it taxiing fast enough for the engine RPM to go to the full red line, but not so fast that the plane wants to fly, which was a very difficult thing to do in an airplane like this that flies at such a low speed. Needless to say, I aged about five years on this one taxi. It's kind of fun, it is like a go-kart. I'm holding it in there, hoping to get that engine oh, nice and crispy hot. That's what it needed, is just to be ran really, really hard to get that engine super duper hot so that all that sludge would burn out of there and we could then get a good cylinder reading. Without a good cylinder reading, we cannot make this thing safe to fly and legal to fly, which is gonna cause all kinds of other issues. Not gonna lie. That is kind of sketch. Uh, how are we gonna get this back in there? Very, very carefully.
Nice. Clear on this wing. <gasps> Not gonna lie, my blood pressure is up just a little. All right, we'll hold it there. So it's nice and toasty warm. We're gonna pull that plug out and see if that made any difference. All right, what are you guys' bed? Did that make any difference? I hope it did. Do you have a feeling not? Yeah. All right, well. Hey. Slight feeling not, being honest with you. Ooh. Watch out, Kim. Yeah. Try to get them to loosen and seat. Reading right there, 20. I'm holding. That's a bummer. It's coming out of there. It's way down there. It was way down there. And it's that supposed to right be there. supposed to be way up there. Yeah. Right there. Way down there. So let's tell the boys and girls what that means. That didn't work. It just didn't work. It was uh, fun. You know, there there is another option, but the problem with doing the other option is there's tools that we require that we don't have. Right yep. But that's pulling the cylinder off, right? Or is that just well, taking the valve that's, and that's, lapping the valve? That's lapping the valve while it's still on there very, very, very carefully. Yeah. Um, which not a lot of people tend to do, um, but I, I've seen it done before and I've seen it work many times. For those people that are watching that are not mechanics, that don't know the details of what we're mysteriously talking about, basically we'll pull this cover off there's a little rocker in there that pushes the valve down. A pin comes out of there, the rocker comes off. We then squeeze that spring to remove the spring off of there. And then we put some, you know, grinding, lapping compound on the face of the valve. And then we push it and then have a drill or some sort of something to move the valve back and forth to make the seat, clean the seat up. And then we put it all back together and then that's that's the issue. But right now, what we just saw, which was we did not know, it was coming out of the breather down there, which that, tell the boys and girls what that is. That's piston rings. That's the rings themselves not seating all the way into the cylinder. Now, we have a few different reasons why that could be. We could have one, we could have a broken ring, which we can do a borescope and see if we got scratching inside the cylinder to see that. Two, we could just have a stuck ring because the airplane hasn't flown for a while, which is not totally out of the question. Uh, we could have the ring in gaps on the pistons could have been opened up for whatever reason, but that's kind of weird because it only has 200 hours on this thing. They could have maybe aligned up, you know, because the rings are supposed to be opposite of each other. Yeah. If they're in a line, that air will pass through a lot easier. So yeah, the, the long and short of it is uh, she gonna need some work. So we're hoping maybe just maybe this one will have done something better. Hey, look, Jack Stan Jimmy. How about that? Boom! Between both of us, we should be able to do something here. Okay, we're not ignited yet. We're just hooking up. All right. Yep. Hooking up. Now, what we're hoping to see. Okay, we're going to put it at 20, 18, 20. Right, we're hoping to see those going up together. And we're bottomed out. 80 and 35. Fantastic. Hold that top for it. Keep it on. Keep it on. You almost had 40. You're back down to about 33. Yay! Boo! Yay! So, two of the four cylinders. Hey Jesse, why are you shoving a rope down into the cylinder? Uh, what's that saying? Do as I say, not as I do. This is um, old school, but. The older the better. <laughs> That's right. Valve lapping. That's valve. the stuff that will cause cancer in California. <laughs> valve lapping compound. Yeah, basically the rope goes in, gets all bunched up, smushes between the piston and the valve, holds it in place. And then we can take the spring off of the valve and let it float. You need a thicker rope. Bigger rope. 
And oh. careful not to drop shims or anything else that might come that out of there. Be zero shims. Thankfully, Good. we were able to dig through Check out and find the tools we device. needed to make this repair so happen. This comes on here, pushes on that, and we gotta take those two little things out of the middle there. That's what's holding the spring and all that stuff on. Take those out, this thing is gonna go poof, And then we'll be able to get to this valve and spin it, grind it on there, and uh, hopefully seal that thing up. So we don't have to take that cylinder off there, which would be ideal. Make sure that don't yeet off at me. Pew! Springs. Now that we have the spring off of the valve, we can take our hand and move it back and forth and feel just how much crunch and stuff and gunk is on the face of that valve holding it open and causing all of our issues. It's is not the nicest thing in the world. It is not the safest thing in the world. But it is Jimmy's world. Yeah, you gotta be careful. <laughs> this is one of the most dangerous repairs we can do on the engine. There is so much that can go wrong. If we allow that piston to go too far down, yeah, the valve could fall inside the, the engine, and now we have to take it apart. So every single step of this, we have to be so, so careful, and it has to turn out just right. With the generator on it, so it should be pretty straightforward. What is in this jar on one side is a very coarse, gritty compound that we have to put on the face of the valve inside the engine to then grind off all of that carbon. I mean, there is a little bit of blackness on it, but I think that's where it's leaking at right there. But as far as the cut on it, and then we have to clean that and put on a fine paste that will then polish off all the other things. And without getting any of it down in the inside of this engine and destroying a $20,000 engine. Just a smidge. And then you scoop it with a zip tie. Yep, you just throw, you don't need a ton, you know. You just need a little bit of this gritty. I dare you to taste it. He's going to fall over dead in five minutes. That's right. Operation, there you go. The drill is helping to grind off all that old, nasty, black sludge that is causing all of our problems. Alright, I'm going to stop him on there. The whole process took about an hour to do both steps. Now that we have it put back together and cleaned, our fingers are crossed that this is going to work. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That is not a good sign. Well, that's already 10 times better than what it was. We are looking for any number over 60, and that will give us the green light to keep moving forward. 78, holding at 62. Holding at 62, holding at 62, 64 almost. Give me one second. And that was the one with the green leading through. Same. Yeah. Well, boys. Look at him. Smugness. <laughs> Almost like I know what I'm doing. Smugness. There you go. All right. Now, before we put that away, let's throw that rocker on there. One of the clips that holds the valve in is now under extreme spring pressure and decided to come loose. So we're going to take a chance and hit it with a hammer to see if we can't knock it back in place. What could possibly go wrong? There we go. Well, one down, one to go. And we had flushed the cylinder out, so all the oil yeah, and stuff was oil. gone. If we throw a little oil now in Now that we knew that trick worked, Jesse continues to work on the other cylinder that was giving us issues late into the night. This is just the first day of these five days. 
Yep. Sun up to sun down. What do you think? What do you think the final number is going to be? What was it before? 30, I think. Yeah, 35. 72. All right. What do you think, Vicky? Opening 70, but not, not below 60. Yep. All right. I'm going... What year is this thing? A 46? So I'm going to go 64. You know, that. All right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. All right, here we go, boys. Place your bets. Place your bets. Come on, anything over 60. Hmm. Going backwards. Yeah. Nope. What is it coming out of? The, the exhaust again? I didn't move it at all. And you know, I'm almost half tempted to wonder if it's an engine. Because it's not so so tight right there. A possibility. We pull that rocker off and then see. Yeah. We all want to do that in the morning when everybody's fresh. Oh, not bad idea, honestly. I mean, since this rocker's off, just for since I stayed through the room, I just want to do it in the place that one. Yeah. There's nothing in there. Hmm. The end of day one, and we are already behind schedule. I thought the Cub was going to be the easiest airplane out of all seven airplanes, and turns out it is fighting us every step of the way. At the beginning of day two, Jesse continues to work his magic, trying everything to get that cylinder to come back to life. While he's doing that, if we have any hope of getting all seven airplanes started in only five days, I have to move on to the next airplane. I can't get this intake valve to spin. Remember how we would pull the springs off? Oh, there it goes. Here we got the bug in the bottom. It took Jesse hours to get both of these valves to where they were sealing correctly. Uh, right at 50. Got a little bit better. And that shows uh, 65. Hallelujah! This engine is ready to go it. and has passed the inspections that we needed it to pass. Awesome job, Jesse. And honestly, this thing just needs to get flown. Yeah, in reality, it, it honestly does. Dude, I need this. <laughs> I, I have never in my life seen a 25, 30 seconds. Wow, dude, I need this. This is sweet, a 25, 30 seconds. It's been used a lot too. That's the best part about it. I need me one of them 25, 30 seconds wrenches. All right, this is good for now. Just when we thought we were done with the Cub, it had one more gift to give. Hey, Jimmy. Come here. I found something. That can't be good. What'd you find? Uh, maybe an issue? Well, that's an issue. Why don't, you, why don't you take a gander up in there? Is that what I think it is? Mm -hmm. Oh, that is a big old honking mud dauber. 
Wow, it's all kind of on that cable. Look at that. That's no bueno. Well, there may or may not be uh, some more too. Oh, good. I mean, it's strange to me, you know, the plane's only sat for a few years. I don't understand why I have so many mud bothers. Oh, there's a little one right there. Got that one right there. There we go. That one. He's a little guy. Oh, yeah. See him up in there. Hold on. Yeah, look in there. Oh, yeah. We get rid of those. Shoot this thing off climb a lot better oh yeah get some useful load back all right ain't nothing we can't handle wouldn't be my first rodeo here we go we got it a few mud dampers are not going to be enough to stop jimmy jesse and vicky from getting this airplane flying again over the next several days in between working on the other airplanes they were able to get it back in inspection and legal to fly however jimmy doesn't have the license he needs to be able to fly this type of airplanes, so that is going to have to be another story. <laughs>